Hi guys. Okay. So I got some people coming in. They're just not here yet. So it's just us. I've got so much going on. I can't even begin to tell you. But as long as I've got you to myself for right now, let me show you what just came in today. This is for my Bowling for Rhinos fundraiser that I'm helping the Kansas City Zoo do. And it's a sticker, it's three inches, it's vinyl, and it's Save the Chubby Unicorn. So the 350 on my site, if you go there and, and, and buy anything actually, I've got a 15% discount and then I donate a 15% to the Bowling for Rhinos if you use code BFR. So um, I've got all kinds of really cool stuff on there. I, I Let me tell you about Bowling for Rhinos. Bowling for Rhinos is a fundraiser that's been around for about 30 years. And it was uh, originally started by the Kansas City Zoo. And I believe, I hope, yeah, anyway. So the the fundraiser is actually a bowling event. So you go to and you bowl and you pay for tickets and all that other stuff. And there's usually a silent auction. Well, I donated a piece to an original that I painted specifically for bowling for rhinos in Kansas City. Um, but they were doing a, a straight up uh, bowling event. So I said, well, why, why don't, why don't we do uh, take them the silent auction online and then tag and send it everywhere. So we're in the process of sending it everywhere. Um, but uh, for right now, it's, it's online and you can, it's a silent auction. Auctions open, so you can go ahead and, and bid on pieces. And the proceeds go to an organization called Bowling for Rhinos. Actually, it's the American Association of Zookeepers and the event is Bowling for Rhinos. Um, each zookeepers association runs their own event. So there's like 85 events every year nationwide. And the, the point is to help raise money to support the rhinos on the preserves that they live in, in Indonesia and in Africa. Um, there's several that they that it benefits, and and the thing is, the rhino is a flagship species, and um, because it's a flagship species, it that means that the habitat it lives on supports all these other animals. So by supporting the rhino and the habitat it lives on, you're supporting all these other animals. So really, really cool. Um, so if, if you're interested, I will, I will pop the link into, into the, um, into the chat here and you can go check it out. Um, I have so much going on that I want to share. It's, it's ridiculous. I have, um, let me find this link real quick. Nothing's real quick. Nothing's real quick. Okay, so copy and I'm gonna put that link in there. Okay, so that is the link to Bowling for Rhinos, the silent auction. Okay, so go check it out. Go check it out. And then, um, okay, the next thing that I'm doing and this is so much fun. I've been talking about doing an endangered species book for kids for a long time. Last night, I just got a bug and I had to do it. So I outlined the story and I'm like, oh my God, that story fell together so easily. So I've got the outline and I went and looked for characters. And, and, and here's the thing. It's going to be an augmented reality book. So you're going to be able to read the picture book. But each page is going to have what's called a zap code on it. And you download the app and you look at it through your smartphone. And then all of a sudden the page comes to life and starts doing, acting out the story. Now I've done this once in my coloring book. And um, you can actually go look at the page and scan the page directly on the screen and watch it happen. If you download Zapworks. From your from your yeah. it's awesome it's awesome so I started a Kickstarter and the Kickstarter is to help me get the 3d elements so that I can start um, programming the animation 
and the the um, getting the book ready for publishing. So um, I've started a Kickstarter and I'm really excited about it. Um, I'm going to share that here too. Um, where is it? Okay, I'm finding it. Um, so, yeah, so what it is is um, it's, it's a book about three kids and the kids are in class and they are talking about the environment and they're talking about animals and the teacher kind of mentions, oh yeah, these animals aren't gonna be around in 30 years or whatever. And the kids are confused. What do you mean they're not gonna be around forever? You know, that's, and they get very concerned. So they go to, they go to the library and here's, here's the, here is, here is the link to the Kickstarter. Um, and I'm updating the video tomorrow. Um, I have some storyboards that I'm coming up with that we're gonna do a mock-up of the book so we can kind of flip through and give you a better idea of what, what to expect. So this is the mock-up opening scene where the kids are in the classroom and they're being they're they're watching they're watching the TV and the teachers talking about about um, endangered species. And you know, they're introduced to the to the subject of um, Hi Denise. <laughs> um, they're they're um, introduced to the topic of um, extinction and endangered, and they get really worried about the animals that they love. So they run to the they run to the library. So here's them at the library looking it up on the on the computer, um, and um, Hi Denise. Um, they're they're looking it up on the computer and that's when they're introduced to um hi gretchen they're introduced to um to mist and to norvin which are two characters that i introduced in my coloring book and promised that they would appear later because i knew i was going to do this book um i was just telling them about my kickstarter that i started last night to get this book thing going gretchen i'm so excited i'm so excited um and I'm just kind of outlining the story. So the kids are starting class, they're talking about animals and, and the teacher mentions that they're not gonna be around in 30 years. The kids get confused, introduce the topic of extinction and then endangered. So they get scared, they go into the library and they're looking things up and in the computer, they see Mr. Norvin and Mr. Norvin, give them all the data, just data though, numbers. Not really a feel, but numbers. so they can kind of get an idea but they're concerned. So Mist and Norvin make it so that they can draw the continent of Africa on a whiteboard and that turns into a portal that takes them to Africa. So they go through the whiteboard and they land on the other side coming through a chalkboard um, in this little rural African classroom where they meet another little boy. And the little boy talks to them about um, talks to them about um, preserves and how that's how a lot of these animals have to live because if they're not on preserves, they're targets. And even when they are on preserves, they're targets. Um, you did, Gretchen? Gretchen says, saw that. No, I'm a retired elementary school librarian. Did that for 18 of my 35 years teachers. That's awesome. That's so awesome. Um, but... So they go to a preserve and they end up talking to the lion and the elephant and the lion and the elephant are telling them that, you know, yeah, they're considered vulnerable on this scale. And they explain that there's a scale and they, that they're vulnerable on this scale, but that it used to be worse that people have started caring about what's happening to them. But there are other animals that need more attention. And then they introduce the rhino which ties in my bowling for rhinos, which is awesome. Um, they talk to the rhino and they're chatting with the rhino. And then the rhino introduces the, 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 the North African cheetah. They talk with the cheetah, introduces him to the grevy zebra. Grevy zebra introduces him to the African wild dog. And then the African wild dog 
introduces them to the African penguin. And the kids are kind of thrown for a loop. And this is just a little fun thing that, you know, a little geography thing. Hey, Africa goes all the way down, you know, and that's on the on the most southern tip of, of uh, Africa. And southern Africa is where the penguins are. So they get all excited. You know, they're like, oh, my God, what, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Is there anything we can do? And then it cuts back to the lion and the elephant. And they talk about what needs to happen on a global basis. And then they break it down and say, you know, here's what you can do. Here's what you can do. Not you, but you. And the kids realizing they can actually contribute, get excited. And they're making all these plans and they're talking all this, you know, they're just chattering. And them and the, and the little African boy that they met when they came over head back to the classroom where they go through the chalkboard back to the United States and where they um, they end up talking to the, 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 a teenager that I forgot to mention that's in the library that's helping them do research on the computer. And then the next day, it cuts to the next day in class, and they're still going over endangered and animals and environment. And the teacher says, now, what do you guys think you can do? And the kids emphatically start raising their hand. They know, they know. And they get very excited. And then at the end of the book, I want to have coloring pages. But I'm th rethinking that a little bit. I think I want to have flats with, with the paintings of the different animals that I've done that are those animals, that, that are the cheetah, that are the lion and the elephant, etc. And then I want to include a little booklet that is a coloring book that goes, that is kind of part and parcel. Um, but yeah, so that's that's the project that's the project but here's the here's the fun thing is that as you're going through each page you've got my paintings right and that's that's going to be fun my stuff's real vibrant and, and fun but each page is going to have a code and you if you have zapworks downloaded onto your phone and you catch the page and the, and the code in the view screen it's going to start to come to life and play out the words so you're going to be able to watch each page tell its story. So that's what's that's what's going to be fun. But that's what I need help with is is I need some I need um, the Kickstarter to help me get some of the assets that I need to build the the animation um, AR components that go with the book. So I just started it. I got 30 days. I'm I'm looking to get five grand and we'll see what we can do. I'm crossing my fingers and um, Chad has been so nice to tell me I really need to read you the video because I've kind of gone live with it like this and I'm just talking to people. But he says you really need to have like where you're telling them what you're doing, what you're going to give them and and how you came to here and stuff. So I need that's why I'm trying to do a mock up of the, of the, the drawings that are going to be in there now. That's not exactly the drawing that's going to be in there, but you get the feel. You're going to get the feel for what the book could be or should be. So um, what's the other thing? Oh, very exciting. I have a live show this Saturday at 3 p.m. Pacific time here on Facebook and on YouTube and on Twitch and um on and I'm having it with a fellow TikTok artist by the name of Dave Makes Things and his name is Dave Conroy. You should go check out his site. Um, Dave Conroy is is an awesome abstract artist. He's very, you know, in touch with things. I, I love it. He's doing this great big thing with the post office right now where he's encouraging people to mail him a blank piece of paper and stamps and he's going to send them something in return and it's trying to generate mail and and to buy stamps to keep the post office running so i'm super i'm super happy about that he and i are having a live show he's in long beach and i'm up here near la and we're going to be um remote show logging in with Streamyard, and we're going to be streaming to facebook and youtube um, if I have the ability to stream to Twitch, I might, but I think definitely Facebook and YouTube. Oh, look, we have, we have, we have Katie. Hi, Katie. Hey, how you hey. doing? Huh? How you doing? 
I'm doing great. You're the first one here. So I've just been chatting about all the all the projects I'm working on. Oh my God, you're going crazy. I am. I don't know when to stop. It's awesome though. <laughs> That's good. That's how I am with school right now. Oh, oh my gosh. Steven Cruz. Huh? Hey there. Hi. Hey. hey. Hey, Katie, I want to give a shout out. I just saw your presentation this week. And also I saw that PBS piece they did on you. It was very riveting. Oh, good. Cool. Very telling story. Did you see that, uh, Kim? No, I didn't. Is there you a link I can go see it? Oh yeah. Uh, it, do you have the link to that, right? So Kim could see yeah, it. Yeah, actually, it's it's. Um, I think put it in the chat. Yeah. Are you in the back of the stream yard? Can you put it in the chat for everybody? I think so. Yeah. Let me. Uh, okay, cool. and, and I want to thank you also, um, as an American citizen, for your service and your sacrifice to this country. Yeah, yeah sure. You're awesome. Yeah. I needed a job when I was a kid, so there it was. Yeah. In case anybody here doesn't know. My first instructor was a Marine. And Katie, Katie was a Marine, or is a Marine. Yes. Yeah. Well, right? I never worked as hard as in my life with that guy. He, he promised me, you're going to work harder than you've ever worked in your life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know? Um, um, so thank thank you. It was it's Kim, you should see it. it's really fantastic. Okay, I'll I'll definitely look at it. I'm like going crazy over here. Oh my gosh. You seem like you have it under control. I do, but yeah, your purple hair. Can you sleep at some point. Look what look what came in today. <gasps> oh bowling for rhinos! Yeah. Oh, Save the chubby unicorn. The I chubby unicorn. Save the chubby unicorn. Here, here. Save the chubby unicorn. Yeah. Uh, there's somebody in our group, this young la lady that's an artist that does the same thing, a uh, subject matter as you do, endangered species. And she was yeah. out with a little uh, kayak parrot, mm -hmm. but it was a, a regular kayak. We have a black headed kayak. And, right. and, and her kayak was on her shoulder. And, and the, I think it was a female because it was really mellow. Ours right. is a fiery little bird. I know I'm always hearing him in the background. <laughs> yeah. And, and he's nice. And then he, he decides to bite your ear. <laughs> Great. That's just what I need. <laughs> just what I need. The guys. I've already got like holes in my ears. I've got like an industrial over here and a dace piercing over here and a conch piercing over here. So, you know, I don't need any more holes. Okay. Yeah. But, um, um look, I started doing, I started doing, um, Okay, so do you know about my Kickstarter? I sent you guys links to it, but I, uh, I, I did it. For the uh, silent auction? No, no, uh, no. This is for, for my endangered species book for kids. It's a Kickstarter. Oh, yeah, you were telling me about that with the VR in there? Remember? It's going to have AR in it, yeah. I, I did it, but the video, Chad Chad reached out to me and said, we were, can, can you take a little criticism? But I'm like, absolutely. He goes, we should really redo that video. I have these ideas and we could do this and that and the other. And I'm like, oh my God, really? So um, I'm putting together a dummy book. That you should redo the video. Yeah. But, but oh yeah, well, I did it at four in the morning. But this is a, a dummy, um, like intro page. Like this is like the first scene. Yeah, you're storyboarding. You're doing what, yeah. what's called pre-visualization storyboarding. Right. Um, I, I used to be a storyboard artist. This but here's, doing. here's, what's funny. Here's yeah. what's funny yeah. between you, you, me and, and the, and the four people watching. Okay. I took the assets from turbo squid because the Kickstarter is to help me buy the 3d assets so that I can build this animation. And my thought was I was going to build the animation and then use scenes from the animation as reference for the paintings. So I was going to build it electronically and, and then model the, the look and feel of the book after what I accomplished in the AR. But I need to buy the AR pieces before I could do all that. So how do I get a, a comp? I could build, so, build something too. No, but check it out. But check it out. I yeah. These are all different components that I brought into Photoshop and then ran an action, a Photoshop action. Yeah. And so like, I just totally, and then here's, here's them in the, in the library with the computer. And then, yeah, so I'm, I'm coming up with it. And then Chad and I are going to um, 
connect tomorrow and, and reshoot it. But like my sister said, I need to reshoot everybody. I'm like, okay, I did it at 4 a.m. I just had to. <laughs> it. No, it wasn't horrible or anything. I mean, you no, it just, it just could have, it could have been better. Could have yeah. Been better. yeah. You're doing the right steps. You're, you're pre-visualizing it on paper first. Then, then yeah. you, you, you know, a uh, shot by shot, what you have, and then you right. get the footage, right. And then you cut it yeah. together. Well, these are all animated and rigged, so so when I bring them into Blender, I can move the limbs and stuff around and position it how I want. So I'm really excited about that. Yeah. Um, oh my God, this is going to be an amazing thing, an amazing thing. I'm so excited. Well, if you, if you need any architecture, any any uh, environments built, uh, okay. I, you know, like I did that the uh, uh, the linear gallery. Oh yeah, yeah, that's 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 awesome. Um. Right now, I think I'm good. Um, but in the I'm future. trying to keep it simple. I'm trying to keep it super simple because yeah. the more complicated I make it, the more time consuming it's going to be, and it's it's, it's going to be. The more you can do textures, uh, mm -hmm. the easier. Right. Well, it so, doesn't have to be on the web. It's just, but it does. It, it does and it doesn't. It's you're not going there from a website, but it is being delivered via the web through your smart device to the book. Yeah. But. Yeah, super excited about this project. Um, you stuff. Yeah, well, you know, I I don't know what about. I just got this burst of energy, and and I'm doing I'm doing bowling for rhinos. I'm mm -hmm. doing this book. I have festival of licensing happening in October. Um, I signed up for that. They started. I I made requests for appointments. I got turned mm -hmm. down for four appointments and picked up for one. So I'd rather be turned down and picked up for one or two that really matter. Only thing is the one that I got picked up for is the European show. So my appointment is at 4 a.m. Because oh, wow. we're yeah. dealing with their time, right? It's not a big deal for you, though. You're always up at 4 a.m. So, yeah. <laughs> so, um, you, you trying to connect with vendors and stuff like that? Yeah. Yeah. Huh? With licensing agents. With, yeah, with licensing agents. Well, so I want to see... Yeah, and then and and then um, what do you call it? I I uh, I have that, and mm -hmm. then I have like October is filled with all the virtual shows. Okay. I have I have uh, Beverly Hills wants me to teach a workshop on the eighteenth of October in person at a at a mansion out in Beverly Hills, and they're gonna have like maybe ten people. They're still narrow, you know, nailing down the specifics that'll that'll um mm -hmm. all right bye denise denise says she's signing off <laughs> oh denise yeah. yeah she donated to the bowling for rhinos it's amazing so yeah How, how's that going are uh, you guys getting um we just yeah lot? we've got we've got like three bids on stuff it just opened and i we really need to hit hard with the social media uh, so I need to, I came up with a template for, uh, promoting all the artists. So that's going to be 20 posts right there. We got 20 artists donating. Wow. Crazy. Oh. Fantastic. Right. And, and you, oh, it's on the road. It's on its way. Yeah. And then, and then I just, I just, I have this pride thing where I just, I just want to see, I want to see Bowling for Rhinos bring in a shit ton of money, you know, just. Well, it's a cause you believe in. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's the whole thing is that, you know, there used to be hundreds of species of, of rhino. We're down to five. We're down to five. And of those five, there's only one that's in any decent shape. And that's the white rhino. And there's like sub subpopulations of the white rhino. Like we just, um, the Northern white rhino, I think is the one that just became, you know, is functionally, extinct because the last male died um but they have his sperm and they're but the females are too old to reproduce so they're going to do artificial insemination in the southern white rhino to have the northern white rhino babies and they've actually done that before which is amazing wow well, but you know that's a lot of a big length to go to to save a species that we sh that we messed up in the first place well we because we messed up their environment the, yeah. You know, See, and that's that's the thing I want to touch on in the book is is that there are different reasons why different animals are extinct. are you know their numbers are are bad. 
You know, there's one where, you know, the grubby zebra has only a thousand or so, you know, mature individuals. But then you have you have the wild dog. I think it's the wild dog, African wild dog. That you we don't even know what their numbers are because they're so fragmented. And and it's some, this is something that I didn't even realize when I was talking about endangered species is that okay, you know, I'm just thinking, I'm just thinking, oh, this is going to um, this is going to reduce the numbers. But I didn't think that they're going to do something that goes through the land and then separates these two so that they can't they can't mate that they're um yeah the environment the environment and poaching that's that's the big well, but china is 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 throwing in billions and billions of dollars of infrastructure into into uh, africa and yeah. they're 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 not doing it in an ecological friendly way they just want to put no, in there's, a, there's a lot of uh in africa a lot of a, a lot of what we're seeing in addition to the poaching it is and, and and it affects the environmental factors is 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 the encroachment that that man is having so it's like it's you know their their farms and stuff you know they're they're fighting the the animals on their farms it's like okay yeah i i get you know you're having to build your your farm in this particular area which is their territory and you guys have to learn how to be nice to each other but how do you be nice to something that's going to charge you and kill you you know so you know you, your life is in danger so then you shoot them when you shouldn't be there in the first, I don't know. Yeah, but, no, no, I mean, but part of that is is just poverty. I mean, these but, governments and, and are corrupt, and the people are trying to make it as dirt farmers, and then and then also, like I say, China's buying up land and doing agribusiness and all kinds of development there that it that that is like strip mining the the whole environment. And, and well, that's particularly true in Sumatra. That's very that's very much so true in, in Sumatra, where there's a paper company that that produces toilet paper and and other paper products that has decimated the Sumatran forest. And and the thing is that the Sumatran forest it's very, you know, rainforesty and and it's it's cleared like the area of Ohio off it, this little it's island. It's off this little island. And and then what happens is they have these peat marshes that are very high in CO2 and stuff. So, you know, you start messing with the balance of things and it just messes everything up. And, like area. And there's one there's one rhino, I think, um, that's extinct. That's that's from Sumatra. I, I, I want to say it's a Javan rhino, but I have to I have to. My that, mind is flitting about so i remember reading about them not so long ago they were they were endangered but they were still around not well there's like i said i think that there's there's one of the species of rhinos not the javan hey tony how are you you want to join us yeah um, by, the way, uh, by the way i finished my commission and i turned it in oh how they like it i'm getting another one in, in, on the 21st really Congratulations! Yeah. And and there you have you heard of First Dibs? First Dibs, no. It's a big luxury brand, uh, a con, um, company that 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 they're signed with. So my right. stuff will be on First Dibs. Oh so, no! What, what Tony says he's recovering from a minor surgery. What are you okay? Wow. Yeah. So First Dibs, tell me about First Dibs while he's. Well, first this is it like um, um, they sell like luxury um, luxury items and one of a kind things. Like these guys sold a surfboard; they broke a record. They sold a surfboard for thirty thousand yeah. dollars in the a nineteen thirties, a circa nineteen thirties board that they had, and they found it in a farm in like the Midwest. You know, like miles away from any body of water. Right, and you're like wondering, how did this get here? <laughs> Story behind it, they were, the greenskeeper from from um, uh, one of these uh, big companies in, in uh, like Spreckles or whatever the sugar pineapple company, uh, right, was from the Midwest. But he he was given a surfboard in the twenties, and uh, I guess they left and went back home, and it's been in the family since then. But um, yeah, those those are are some amazing. Uh, Tony's um, asking you a question, Stephen. He's saying, yeah. Are you, yes, I, I bodyboard. Um, 
some people don't consider that surfing, but uh, you look at Mike Stewart, and and it's pretty amazing. Yeah, it's great to see the water. Yeah. So this this is great. We we're, we're starting to to pick up steam here. <laughs> I like this. Where's Tony? Where are you? Where are you, Tony? Tony's in Florida. Okay, so the other coast. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and he does a lot of wave photography, huh? We're coast to coast. Uh, Katie's yeah. down the middle, <laughs> right? New yeah, Mexico. Mexico. My my sister um 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 had a, um she was worked with our ciegos the the uh the um irrigation um and she was in santa fe she had a place in santa yeah. nice um Tony nice. Says in, uh, jacksonville beach he's in jacksonville beach okay he's asking, you, he's asking you if you have a break you like oh yeah i have i have several breaks um i go locally to venice but i like uh, um several breaks in, in ventura i like um um uh, this, the C Street in Ventura, which is California yeah. Street in Ventura. Oh, see, I showed in a gallery out there, the Red Brick Gallery on Main. Yeah, yeah. by the yeah. fairgrounds. Right yeah, off. yeah, right there. Ventura is really great. And then also, when I go up and visit Santa Cruz, I like to go on at steamers. Okay. I had an epic day one time. I was in, in fifteen foot uh, waves, and then I was bodyboarding a fifteen foot wave like halfway across the bay. It was just. I felt like a little kid. It was like tobogganing down a hill. Gretchen is that she's up there near Seattle on Puget Sound and that it's smoky there. Yeah, my, my brother's up in uh in Oregon in uh outside of Beaverton. And that's they're they're having their problems there with air quality. They have to stay inside. Well, it's shifting inland, but it's still really bad. I mean, I had to go out today because I had um I had an eye appointment. Uh-huh. I'm two points from glaucoma. Holy shoot! No, he says he doesn't think I'll get it. He's but, but. there's pressure in your in your in your uh, eye. I don't know. He wants to see me in five months. So, but I need new glasses. So I just got a new, a couple new prescriptions. One for progressive bifocals, and then one for close up. Mm -hmm. Tony's saying Santa Cruz is one of the best places to shoot in the water. Well, oh, yeah. when you. When you get out here, Tony, you need to let us know. Yeah. And, um, oh, okay. okay. Yeah. See. Yeah, I got an, I got another commission, so I'll be doing another one. Um, I wish I could share screen and I could show you guys what my la latest uh, glaucoma. Lots of T. I have THC, um, but I I've been told that I'm not supposed to use it because. Um, I have other things that it doesn't interact well with, but uh, yeah. Yeah. So, so we'll see. But uh, no, I'm just, there's so many things. So you're getting a new surf, surfboard on what day? On the 21st, you're going to come back. These guys are like, it's three, uh, three uh, um, friends. They started this yeah. company and they're, they're, they're running out of Honolulu. But this guy has a place in in California. He comes down to California, <laughs> and then so he picks up boards out here, and then and all over the country. Then he comes and and he uh, and he drops them off, and so he's going to be swinging around my my way. And um, I got another one. It's another another path, man. You guys, I you know. That's well, didn't didn't Nick and Patrick, specifically Patrick, say that you know you get out there and then you listen to what you listen to what the audience is telling you, and that'll tell you what direction you need to go. Yeah, I mean, this is, I would never have guessed this, you guys. Uh, it's like I feel like all my life uh, things have happened this way, where I never ever guessed that it would happen this way. It's uh, I've gone through a lot of windows, a lot of doors have been closed, but then I crawled. Right window you you're know? tenacious yeah that's you're, you're tenacious. if anything that's what, what's gotten me through is this i don't quit i don't quit you know and, yeah and so uh yeah and i think that this will feed into the other stuff i don't i don't have quite as good a handle i mean you're i mean you're awesome uh kim with with your licensing and and marketing and 
how you put I, products and, and and merchandise the merchandising. I really have to get up on that. And but you you've got that down. No, I just I honestly feel like I'm a little all over the place and I'm chasing what I think my audience wants. So I'm chasing things that I think would work. Things aren't working now, so I'm gonna chase this over here. Oh, look at the puppy. Oh. You know? So, so you know, I kind of feel like. <laughs> oh, yeah, did you see the puppy? Uh, yeah, it's telling, it's telling us that, that we're making her want to move back to California. Don't. You know, I was just talking to um, my boyfriend, and he helped me go get my car in Mercedes at, at, at Beverly Hills because that's the only place that'll fix my car because it's a smart car, so it's got limited. Um, and I needed the spark to place. So he, he works for a moving company. All right, Tony. Tony says he's got a bounce. Um, we'll see you later. Um, he says that that's usually at the end of the summer, about now, Things are winding down with people moving. Yeah. Um, and he says that ain't the case. He says it's picking up, if anything. So they are booked. As of yesterday, they were booked through 6th of October. So you can't even get anybody to – you can't even book that company to help you move until the middle of October. <laughs> um, just one thing I, I, I got to say to you, uh, Kim, is that I remember about two months ago – you're totally pursuing different things than you were now, but you know what? What you're really good at is is really pivoting. I mean, you're very uh, you're very uh, flexible in what you can do. I and I, you know, it's it's like Patrick says. You know, you gotta you gotta listen to what's going on, and you can't keep chasing something if it's not working. Yeah, but right. it's hard. It's hard to shift all of a sudden. Your focus. Well, I don't really think I'm shifting some. I'm, I'm still painting endangered animals. I'm just like, okay, I made some stickers. I made I made a sea life coloring book. Um, I really dig the AR. And here's the thing. I think that's special. I think that's unique. I think that's going to make me different. Yeah. So, you're standing out from the crowd because you're you're doing stuff that, that nobody's doing yet. Right. You're on the curb. But the, the thing is, that makes it hard to pivot is because when you're doing something so new, you're learning the ropes and right. you're, you're a very fast learner. You, I, I, mean, I do pride myself in my ability to, to do that. You know, that's, that's what the challenge I taught my, I, you know, I took a, when I learned ZBrush, it, it took me like three years to really learn how to use that, that tool and how to sculpt and everything. You know, I, I think I have so much left to learn when it comes to um, Blender and some of the other stuff. There's some tried and true things like Photoshop that, you know, I, I can make that program sing. You know, I'll make it do things you didn't know it could do. Because I've been using it since before it had the title Photoshop. Literally, it was like part of Corel Draw or something back way oh, back. Oh, yeah, they used to be Corel Draw. That's right. I, you know, it was like. I mean, we're talking, we're talking 30 plus years ago. I was running on Windows 95. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, I, when I learned graphic design, I learned graphic design with a T-square, a waxer, and, and, and an X-Acto knife. Yep. We didn't have the computer until after I graduated. Remember Zipatone? <sighs> yeah. <laughs> that was like architecture school we would use that in our drawings like to put in and it, it's like and the the lettering remember the lettering the yeah uh, yeah yeah you had like sheets of stickers that were different gradients yeah. and 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 lines and you know all kinds of really stuff really cool stuff um but yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you you could teach you you know you could teach a photoshop a, a thing um i've been trying to get into d doing that too uh, but you know the thing is you use it for so many tools what do you what do you focus on do you focus on doing textures with it do you focus on doing uh, uh graphic design you know there's it's just such see, a here's wow. here's the thing it's the capabilities for that program are are amazing you can create animated gifs with photoshop oh yeah I've done that. I've done you that. Can, yeah, you can you can do 3D objects. Uh -huh. 
um, there's just so many things you can do. And then, yeah, there's photo editing and then there's, you know, uh -huh. but um, lately I've been running to um, Adobe Spark. I, I love that. I love you know, I just, love because, that. just because with Adobe Spark, like I, I've gone in and said, okay, new project. What do I want to create? I want to create a YouTube cover. So I go into, and then I create a cover and it's just a graphic. It's just a graphic, but it's the shape and size of a YouTube cover. But then, you know, I look at all that. That's why the cover for this, which I, I renamed this um, palette check. Yeah. So this is, this is palette check. And I created a graphic and we're streaming on my YouTube and my Twitch and everything. And I'm hoping that people will subscribe because this is turning into a really fun thing. Oh. Um, you know, yeah. and a tip on, 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 if you're using the Adobe, another thing that, that works really with that is Photoshop mm -hmm. express because you can do collages with that. If you okay. well, that's what, if you go into, seriously, you go into projects, new, show all collage yeah size load the images say do and it does yeah that's and what then I, you options for layout if you want to change it so and then you add that your logo so your branding is done and then i use i kind of use those two uh in, in i use the express first i start out and i end up in uh, adobe spark spark page spark post i use yeah. both for a page for the uh, uh, blogs and and um, post um, as well, and then everything has your branding on it, and it's like looks all all like it's out of the same. Right. I use it to create graphics in um, okay Mailchimp. Mailchimp yeah. is growing. I love what Mailchimp is doing. Have you tried the Creative Assistant in 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 Mailchimp at all? Not yet. Okay, so when you're when you load a graphic in. Uh -huh. You put a graphic in. It has Creative Assistant, yeah, or or just load it up. So I've gone into Creative Assistant, and it gives you all these different layouts with co composing text and the image and doing some cool shit. And I'm like, awesome. Can you? Do I did that. that way? Huh? Can you do what? templates that way? Like, can you make up templates that way? Using yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's wow. like freaking awesome so what i did was i created a couple graphics for an email you haven't tried it um this is great gretchen saying she hasn't tried that in mailchimp it's fairly new but go in there and play with it because it it created this really cool graphic that i used in my email uh -huh. and um this was the email where i was talking about bowling for rhinos in the beginning and then at the end i do i do this plug for um for my show with Dave this weekend because I have a live show with uh, another TikTok artist this weekend, which TikTok did not go away. Yay. Hey, it didn't get banned. Incidentally, by the end of the month, you want to do another uh, a show? Yeah, I think, I think we should. Yeah. yeah. So we'll, t we'll talk about that, but yeah. yeah, we'll talk about that. So um, TikTok, how's the TikTok thing working? TikTok is amazing. I've actually gotten um, commissions from them and Oh, look, Katie. What is that? A snake. Uh, um, this is the commission I'm working on. That's oh, yeah. Funny. Please show us. It's uh, uh, is that the baby that you were doing the other day? Or yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love that with, uh, that it shows the uh, baby feeding the breast on the breast, that one you did. Oh, yeah. That uh, th You should see this video, Kim. It's it's really amazing. Um. Your your work is really um uh, like it, it's all surreal. It's amazing. Thanks. It reminds me a lot of Frida Kahlo, you know. Yeah, that, people that have I've find them of her before. Mm -hmm. But uh, all but you got a lot of very original vibe on it. Um, look at that. I love that sun. Wow. That sun is crazy, and the and the reflection in the water. That is amazing. Oh, awesome. uh, what are you? What medium are you using? Oils, actually, I was I'm I'm getting ready to mix my oil colors for tomorrow because I have another interview tomorrow with the VA. They're, oh. they're going to watch me paint and they're going to record it. Oh, that's awesome! With the, the VA, the Veterans yeah, Administration. Uh, um, so I'm I'm working with the vocational rehabilitation um, um, crew at the at the VA, and um, they helped me 
have a, a business. Look at that. Look yeah. at you, girl. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, my my neighbor is actually works works there, and I I gave her I dropped off one of the prints, and they're hanging it in the office at the um, at the birth center. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. I just I just talked to the the optometrist that I went to today, and I noticed that there was art. Okay, it the art was watercolor, and it was your typical watercolor that's a little softer. Nothing wrong with it, but it's just less vibrant than it's a different style. And, you know, I noticed that the last name was the same name as the doctor. So I, I didn't want to say anything bad, but I said, I would, you know, I said, do you want to see some of what I'm doing? And then I showed him, I opened up my shop art page and I just put my phone because you don't want to like get close, you know? So I put it on the and he's like, you painted that? I'm like, yeah. And then I said, I would love to have art hanging in here. He goes, do you think it would sell, you know, here, hanging here? So there, there, and then he was like really wanting to write down the website. So we'll. That's, see. that's, that's, that's all positive. But, but he's got a lot of blank wall space. It would just be freaking awesome to have something vibrant. And, you know, you're in a doctor's office to see. Yeah. And you want to see cool stuff. So let's throw some really vibrant stuff. Um, we, have, um, we we at the cancer center here. Uh, there's an art gallery in the cancer center, and a portion of the of the proceeds go to cancer research. Oh, see, that's cool. That's, yeah, super cool. Oh, that is, yeah. Really, and they were yeah. there. her mom was an OBGYN, and that she would have loved to have one of those uh, pieces oh, that you did. Cool. Awesome. And not often. See, I. I I think that's what I really love about small wins is, is, is just the camaraderie and the support. Yeah. I mean, when, when I, when I did that call for bowling for rhinos, because the, the, they only had three donations so far and I'm like, we need to do more than that. I put one call out there. You know, I've got 20 artists up right now. That's so cool. 20, 20. That's a show. That's, that's a, a show. show. Yeah. Now, did 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 the theme have to be animals? No, no. Oh, okay. You know, I mean, there are a lot of animals, and there's um, Sadia. Uh, I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name, but but um, she donated this really cool piece. I think it was called Naughty Kitty or something, and it's it's kind of this really cool abstract piece with what look like, looks like a little cat in the middle. Oh, cool! It's awesome. I love the colors. It's really cool, but um, we've got some amazing pieces that are, that are donated, and we've got um, we've got a calendar and we've got just just some cool stuff. And there's no, you know, no, it's just doing really really well. So we've got like three donations so far, and um, not donations but uh, bids. And it, so you know, it we really need to get to social media. You know, but Kim, you know that the also the, hmm. the this will open up the whole zoo thing for you. You know, because you know those zookeepers, they do talk to each other, right? Right. Well, exactly, and that's that's what there was this um, curator on TikTok that said, "Hey, you guys, I'm looking for emerging artists. Do it me." You know, so I did, and then she went live, and I talked with her live, and then I retagged her in some of my stuff, and she said that I just wasn't for her right now, and I'm like, okay, you know, and that that happens, and 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 the more that happens, the rougher it is, because I also applied to MHS licensing with my art, and they turned me down the same day, um, wow. but they did give me like an alternate route to make a little bit of money that you know, whatever I have to look into that, I just don't have time right now, but. Um, uh, yeah, but you know, she said you need to reach out to the zoos and I'm like, Oh, I'm already there. And I kind of gave her the rundown of what I'm doing. And she says, perfect, fantastic. You know, but I'm, that's what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to, I mean, I was reaching out to each zoo. And then when I found out that bowling for rhinos is an event that almost all the zoos put on zoo through their zookeeper association, I'm like, okay, that's perfect. I proved myself on this ground. LA is already talking to me. Um, you're on your way. It's only you know, 
yeah, it's just a matter of, of staying on the road. But, you know, I'm really pouring everything I have into the endangered species right now because that that's where my heart is. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's hard to be fake and say, oh, I want, I love your pets. You know, okay, I love pets and I love doing cats and dogs. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> but, you know, and I'll take one in a heartbeat because I just, I love doing animals, endangered or not. But the bulk of my effort is on that endangered species. There's an emergency about it. There is. Yeah. Oh, you get it? You got it? Yeah. What, yeah. what did she get? Did she us? She, yeah. I did a flash sale. Oh, look. And I sold oh, vinyl, nice. my three inch vinyl stickers. This one's my favorite. Oh, you the, like that one? I always love the, the octopus. Yeah, I've got two octopus. I've got that one, suckers. Oh yeah, and yeah. there's bottom of the ocean. You know what I like about uh, you're really good at giving your animals. You give them a presence by giving them a character, like Jubilee. You know, yeah. yeah. Person, look at this one. A personality. And yeah, was, I love that one. I yeah. love that one. People, okay, like, you know, you know that I ordered my pins. My, my my pins that are based on that that giraffe are on right. order and they're going to be here in about three weeks. In time for quarter four. Yeah. But here's the thing. I could only order 25 of them just because, you know, I had them, I had them ordered and then back stamped so you can see, you know, if you forget where you got it, you mm-hmm. look on the back and you could see my name stamped in it. And I just, you know, things are tight right now. Okay. So, whatever um but i did get i did get my save save the chubby unicorn i love that that so much yeah okay so kids kids you know kids will really go for that type of stuff if it could end up in the gift shops like it stuff like that oh i still have to ship my painting off to the kansas city Zookeeper, I have to, I have to send mine off, but I was waiting until those came in so that I could put in a few. And then I, I want to, well, I wanted to um, wait until my stickers came in because I, I want to send a bunch and then whoever, whatever they purchase, I want to give instructions that, um, you know, that they throw this one of those in, 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 in all of the purchases. You know, it's, so, it's, a- it's amazing that you're you're get, getting all this licensing and all these these things done. I mean, you're amazing. Look at that. Gretchen said that if it were not for COVID, she would have been just getting back from Botswana photographing elephants and the big five. But next year, that is where I'll be for ten days. What what's the big five, Gretchen? I'm like, wow. Yeah, that's cool. So you need, Sadia says that you need to get one for your 22 year old kid. One of one of the stickers. I'll just send you one. Um, oh, see? Yeah. You know, there's nothing better than, you know, hey, where'd you get that? Oh, I gotta tell you, I was out wearing my mask, right? Okay, my mask is right here. Yeah, mask would be great. My mask. Okay, I'm gonna put my mask on. You ready for this? Okay. The latest okay. one. Uh, this is huh? a new mask. This is my lion. Oh. <laughs> so here's my lion mask, right? That is so clever. So, oh, okay. Gretchen says the five big predators. Okay. Okay. Oh. Cool. Cool. That is I was so wearing weird. this just outside my apartment when my neighbor saw me. Now my neighbor is friends with Tippi Hendren. Oh, yeah. she has that that wildlife preserve. Shambhala Preserve in Acton, yeah. Which yeah. I, I rode the train by every year. So, um, and you love that mask. Oh, um, but anyway, so, 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 uh, she wants to get one for Tippy Hendren because they're having something big at the end of the year and Tippy Hendren doesn't want to come out. And, you know, she, she's older and, and, and I would gather she's in, 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 um, in a group that is more susceptible to catching COVID. So we want to protect her. Um, so she wants to buy a mask for her and I'm like, okay, I love my masks, but there are better protecting masks out there. And I've been researching all over trying to get 
on Dutton Vistaprint has one that is, oh, thank you. It's double layer. That's the next thing they're saying is double layer. Right. Well, the, the one that Vistaprint has, has, um, has, uh, uh, uh a filter in it, a removable filter that oh, you can okay. replace, right? Okay. So I'm trying to order through Vistaprint, and I really want to get one ordered, one of each for Tippy, so that she can feel safe and she could pick which one she want or double up or whatever. But Vistaprint's being difficult and and stuff. But it's just it's just like the regular mask that has the ear things. Mm -hmm. So you know the neck gaiter can get a little warm. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, what I see, I see you, uh, Kim. I mean, you've been at this like 15 years. Uh, Katie, you've been at this how long? 20, 15, 20 years? Well, it depends on what you mean by been at this. I mean, like as an independent artist selling your work. Oh, God. Since 2007. Yeah. And she, yeah. you were in 2005, right, Kim? That's when I started painting, yeah. And, and it's like you, you guys are finding your, your niche. I mean, I mean, I think you're, you're, you got your path, Katie. I see it quite clearly, you know, and I wish I could see it. <laughs> it's part of your, but it's part of your narrative. It has to do with vets. And it oh, has, yeah. And, and, I work really and, vet related though. And rebirth and life and all that. And I see it in your work. K oh, Katie, yeah. I mean, your whole thing about preservation of the planet and species that, that, mm -hmm. That that just sings through you, through your work. I, I feel like I'm barely like a baby taking my first steps, and I'm kind of like get have a little bit of a path that I'm trying to go down. But you know, I see you guys that are farther down, and it 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 uh, it just really it really kind of uh, inspires me that you know, that this is this is like once you're there, you you. It, it gives you a something of an opening where your work goes. It flows. Yeah. You're flowing. Joey, in that direction. Joey is saying, what about Zazzle for a mask source? I'll have to I look at that, Zoe. Zazzle. Zoe, by the way. <laughs> Zazzle, that baby yeah. breastfeeding that you guys were talking about? Yeah. Zazzle said I had to make it X-rated. What? Right? What? I them ever since I was like, no. You know how many women feed their breastfeed their babies now, like in front mm -hmm. of people. I mean, it's just like people that I oh got. There's so many uptight people, man. This is how we all, you know, when we start out our our life. This is how we eat, right? You know, and and and, and honestly, if you don't like it, don't stare. And uh, you know, Katie, one of the things that was really, uh, I resonated with that piece is a psychologist once uh, told me I was um, a therapist and she was talking about like uh, really seeking out life, you know, and how when we're born, when we're fetuses and we're born and we go through the birth canal and they put us on mama's stomach. And before, first thing we try to do is we instinctively reach for, for the nipple with our mouth, we start going, you know, and we don't yeah. know, the baby doesn't know that the milk comes from that, that they have to do that to feed, but it's wired into us. And when, when that, the mouth goes over the nipple and it starts getting nourishment, there's a, a whole uh, brain pathway that opens up in the whole circuit. And, and, and it is, it's a, it's just like part of us choosing life, you mm -hmm. know, to live and choosing to thrive. And it's such a powerful symbol for just any time of our, in our life, symbolically. You know, you got to reach for the nipple. You can't stuck on a black hole. You got to choose life. Computer just about took a dump. <laughs> Is it your new one? You get to get your new one? No, no, uh, it's it's my old one. But I I have it resting on a box because I have this tray that I usually oh. set it on that Sam took off with. So it's on his box, and then I like. The one thing is when I'm on here, it doesn't show me my charge, how charged my laptop is. It won't tell me when I'm streaming if I'm low on battery. So I just happened to go up there and look and see that it was a little low. So I reached down to get my cord to plug it in, and that's when everything started sliding. And I'm like, oh, no. I've done that, too. God, you guys. 
this is, I mean, this is a, this is a good session. I mean, um, last time with the scientists, that was a good, I mean, I, I think that's a good thing. Uh, you, you know, know what? what, my friend, my friends, Rich and, Rich and Todd, um, mm -hmm. they, they're from when I lived up in Palmdale. Mm -hmm. um, Rich worked at Children's Hospital. Okay. In, in the lab, um, working on brain cancer. Mm -hmm. and, and Todd was a, a medical illustrator for St. Jude's. Oh, so, wow. So he still does medical illustration, but um, cool. it's, it's, but he, now he does portraits. And he, what he does is he goes, he's a mountain man. So he goes to these live reenactments, mountain men type events. Oh, and he right. sets up his tent and he says he does caricatures, which he's not like 100% on, but he also takes commissions and does these really awesome commissions. His style is just, is just crazy good. What, uh, he, what medium does he work on? Oil. Oh, wow. Yeah, oil. He's very traditional, so like he tries to mimic period. You know the the period that he's that he's doing. So, um, but he's he's a great guy. He's a great guy. I met him. Uh -huh. He's the one that I met like in two thousand five. Uh huh. He was manning the gallery during a gallery opening when I went there to kind of show my work, and I'm like, okay, I can't do this during an opening. That's okay. rude. Uh huh. But um, you know, here I am, really nervous, showing my work for the first time. You know, searching for some sort of validation. Yeah, that's hard. It is. It is. You know, because like that's I guess one thing that I wanted I want to start um, bringing up is you know what are some of the hurdles that 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 we're running into and 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 one of the things that that. I had an issue with in the beginning was putting my stuff in front of people, understanding that not everybody was going to like it. I liked it, but there was going to be criticism and I had to be able to take the criticism mm -hmm. and not feel crushed. Yeah. So that's, that's. Well, I think you've gotten over that. You know what, you know what your, your, your uh, <laughs> strength is and what, what you have passion mm -hmm. Uh, I think what carries us through is we're passionate. I'm doing this mm -hmm. like I think I'm I'm I'm, I'm pushing myself, mm -hmm. pushing towards like more of the surreal type of thing. I'm kind of transitioning. Mm -hmm. My latest piece is going to be all uh, phosphorescence, right? Uh, so I have, I have this uh, night. I wish I could show it to you. I got this Photoshop composition that I, I'm putting together. So mm -hmm. I, I post things in Photoshop, and what I'm right. doing is I have the stars and then of a, a uh, there's an MC Escher print that I saw in the 1939 mm -hmm. it was like uh, this phosphorescent sea, all these waves. So I did all these, uh, I, I got these pictures of uh, this picture of a wave of uh, phosphorescent yeah. wave and I, I pasted it and then stretched it and did, and, and, and I composed it on the surface and then I have, under the water, I'm, I created an underwater part of it, and I'm using phosphorescent sea life mm -hmm. and coral reef uh, stuff, and and it's like surreal. I mean, it's like um, so. I think I'm and and you saw my piece, uh, the surfboard, right? So it's Gretchen, not, ha Gretchen has a question for us. Uh -huh. Have you guys ever collaborated on a piece? She has a friend who is a painter and does a lot of oil pastel, and he will take a photograph of hers that may not be a hundred percent over and he adds to it in some way and the three pieces so Gretchen are you talking about like he uses one of your pieces as a reference your photos yeah does does she does he use it as a reference and then like um as a jumping board for one of his pieces because I think I reached out to to Ken Wagner about that but I never heard back and you know I never want to use a photographer's image without their consent. So I do have photographs that I use. Um, Sean Heinrich is one. He does some amazing underwater stuff. But I've touched base with him and, and you know, gotten permission to use his stuff. Same with Ben Hicks, who does some really good turtle photography. Yeah. I, I use, like, stock, like, uh, uh, that you buy the rights to. I'll, right. I'll, um, well, he actually draws, he, she says, she act, he actually draws on your piece. Oh, cool. Oh, okay. Well, that's a 
I say that's up to you, uh, you know, in terms of what, what, I mean, Andy Warhol did that, you know, that he yeah. would screen something and then he would paint on it. And, and he said he was all about the surface of the painting, what you do on the surface. So mm -hmm. it's up to you what, what you want your images, how, how, you know. That's awesome, Gretchen. So it's like take it down, pass it around, and everybody adds a little bit something to it, and in the end, it wow, it's something amazing. That's a thought, Katie. Did you catch that? Yeah, I did a. Um, I can hear you guys. I'm just grabbing my paint. Um, mm, okay. I did a um, one of those drink and draw things at somebody's house, and that's what we did. Was I? I had everybody start with a panel and mm -hmm. start, you know, doing something. And then pass it to the person next to them to continue. Cool. Oh, that's awesome. So they all passed in a circle until everybody wanted to keep the one they were working on. And then um, we got oh, a beautiful cool. work out of it. This one lady did one that was like oranges and purples, and there was like a waterfall, and it was just beautiful. Were you all drawing the same thing, or did it just come no, out? No, just out of our heads. There was no mm -hmm. reference or anything. And what I was doing was teaching techniques. So I was explaining how the paint works and how the brushes work and do whatever you want with it. Yeah. Right. See, cause I have a, I have a workshop coming up in Beverly Hills that they want me to do on the 18th. And we're talking about, um, we're wow. talking about who's, who's messaging me. What time is that at now, Chad? Now <laughs> jump in here. I can still hear you. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, Pepper. yeah, so, so Pepper, come on. they have me, you know, they're, they're still working out the details as to yeah. what's, oh, he's making dinner. Come here, Pepper. Um, My conch piercing hurts. Did you sleep on that side? You... I think I think it, it's masks and stuff. Uh, yeah. You, I heard that you can get allergic to certain metals. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah that's I common. To, the, the one I have is surgical steel. Yeah, it's called it's called a nickel allergy, even though it's not necessarily nickel that you're allergic to. Okay. So like if it's copper, you could be copper. Or well, what happens is 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 when 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 you get your ear pierced, your body reacts to what's happened, and then you become allergic to wow. the only to, to any non react any any um anything that's not non reactive. Um, there's a couple metals that are non reactive. One is niobium, the other is gold, and it's supposed to be surgical steel, but um, when I had my navel pierced 20 years ago, um, it reacted to niobium. Really? It's not supposed to do that. Um, I ended up having to let it close because, you know, that's where the pants ride and it's, it, it gets infected super easy. So I let that one close. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I've never had a piercing, but, uh, I, <laughs> You know what? It's it's weird because I get to wanting the actual act of being pierced to happen. It's like I'll be in a real bad place, and I'm like, I need to go get a piercing, and that's when I did the conch piercing. And honestly, you know, when they're in your ear like that, and they're in the cartilage, and mm -hmm. it's so close to where you're hearing, uh -huh. it sounds like celery crunching when it's going through the cartilage, and it's really disconcerting the first time. Wow, I, I heard that the part of it is it uh, it it it, it, um, it produces beta endorphins, and it's kind of like uh you you kind of go through a little buzz. Yeah, it's you know it's it's really cool, but you know there's a lot of things you got to know before you go do that. You have to take care of it. You can't mess around with it. It's an open wound. You know you can't you can't keep twisting it and messing with it. Same thing with tattoos too, right? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Tattoos, it's funny because you figure, oh, you know, you've had color applied. No, 
and a, a pen, a, 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 a needle has been inserted millions of times to embed color underneath the skin. So you, you have an open wound that's this big. Yeah. You know? Did you design that? That did you No, that? actually I didn't. All right, I came to the artist with the I, I really liked the jaw of this uh -huh. dragon. Uh-huh. And it had to be a green dragon with a yellow belly because that's what my husband had was a little green dragon with a yellow belly. Uh -huh. So this was kind of a tribute piece. Uh -huh. And um I went to Vegas to get it done because the tattoo artist that I really wanted to do it was one that was on Ink Master back when it was a, sh a show. He was on season four and season seven. Oh, okay. And um, this is unique because it has my husband's ashes in the black part, in the black ink. So his ashes oh. are Wow. Wow. That's but, you know, no, most places won't do that. Wow. But he did that. You know, it's... He says, you know, you really have to understand that it's really not that much of the ashes. It's actually kind of a whisper, a whisper of the ashes. It's, 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 you know, because you can't mess up the, the, the uh, texture the and the consistency of the ink. Yeah. Cause it's going into you mm -hmm. as be injected in under the skin. But this thing took four hours and it's wow. mm -hmm. you did it in one shot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Does it, does it hurt like hell? Not really. Oh. It hurts. You're being stabbed with a needle. There's yeah, no way around that. I'll My show you that real quick. Mm -hmm. Get the camera right. My uh, My back piece. Oh, did oh wow. You, did you design that, Katie? Yeah, I did. Wow. That's cool. It goes from the tip of my shoulder all the way down to the bottom of my bum. Oh, wow. It's They're big. <laughs> I want to get, I want to get a shoulder piece, you know, something like that. Mm -hmm. But I want my octopus, my um, sinister. Mm -hmm. I want that on my shoulder, but. Why the octopus? I just think it's, it's, it's one of my better paintings. I mean, I do like the amethyst butterfly. It's it's kind of come here, pepper, come here. Okay. No, I'm still eating. You can't take my. He's trying to take my plate with I, my food on it. Tell I, him no. I was just checking. <laughs> uh, uh huh. Hey, how's the how's the keto diet going? It's I, going really good. He's actually went too far into ketosis and had the shakes and was a little nauseous. So mm -hmm. we had to. Say okay, you need to. We got a keto cal drink from the pharmacy. Uh huh. And then um, he, I have to tell him, you know, go go have a little carb something. Mm -hmm. Go have a couple berries or something, just just to bring the carb level back up. Yeah, I'm just getting up. I like that idea that, that you had the fried chicken, and the batter was made with with pork rinds. I love mm -hmm. pork rinds. It's just like I had never thought of that, but it's ingenious. Um, my son took the chicken tenderloins uh -huh. and he he um, marinated them in something with pickle juice, and it's supposed okay. to mimic the way Chick Fil A does it. But Chick Fil A doesn't really do it that way. But that's was is that Jack? That's the the, the cook. Mm -hmm. So he's he's talented in, in, in with food. You know the thing is he doesn't enjoy it really? unless he's baking. If he's baking, he likes it because he likes the sweets. But he does it because oh, here comes here comes here comes Ian. Yeah. Okay, here. There say hi, go. Ian. I'm gonna do this. Okay, say no. Get, you're running away. Come back and say hi. Uh, hi, Ian. What's up? Uh, so Sadia, this is this is, this is my son Ian. And yeah, he's my 18 year old that's got this 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 beard. That he's had since he was twelve, and this deep froggy voice that he's had since he was ten. I can't even grow a mustache. <laughs> and ten. Yeah, he's a lot darker than the rest of us too. Uh -huh. Sam is the palest person I've ever seen. Uh -huh. Oh yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, she's pretty pale. The thing is, Ian can't go out into the sun. For very for very long, he I don't let him go out in the pool. He's had melanoma twice now. 
Oh. Whoa. So, so he's had melanoma twice, just, you know, two little moles, one on his forearm, one on his, on his, on his, like, his bicep kind of thing. Not bicep, but shoulder. Shoulder, yeah. Mm -hmm. And the irony is, I have, have two swimsuits, and, mm -hmm. and, I, and I have no idea where to go. <laughs> But um, you're, you're you're also uh, very sensitive to the sun. You said. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I remember getting heat, heat sick when I was a kid. Oh. Okay, so here's Saudi has something to say to you, Stephen. My my hubby just grew chest hairs. He's forty three. I'm <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm ha I'm a hairless. <laughs> well, this is the longest my hair has been. It's my clothes. Ian like, is hairy. He yeah. is hairy. Yeah. Everything is freaking hairy. <laughs> yeah. Leg, leg hair, arm hair. Yeah. Hair. <laughs> yeah, he's got hair everywhere. It's, it's ridiculous. So it's like most of the um, most of the men in my family uh, got four boys. We're not hairy at all. Yeah. And the one that is most hairy, he's 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 going bald. Yeah. Wow. I love those reds, Katie. Yeah, me too. Zoe says she's got to run, and it was great listening to us. Hey, next time, next next week, Zoe, come on with us. Yeah. Follow that link that I posted and just pop on. Um, my my goal my goal is is to have um, you know, I want to talk about you know, I just want to shoot the shit. I want I want to maybe say, hey, what are you working on? What are you working on? And give a chance for everybody to do a shout out. And then I want to talk about, you know, struggles that we're having and who can help who overcome what. Hey, can you show work on, on can, could I share my screen with you? Absolutely. Could I show you something real quick? Sure. This is my latest, this is what I want to do with the, with, with board. I'm showing you my Photoshop piece. Okay, can so hit sh share screen. Yeah, does it, does it, oh. Let me see, share screen, share screen. Okay, and I get to application window, and yeah, that's what I want to do. That share that, so I get. Oh, look at that! Add to stream. Okay, so. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, why isn't it showing my piece? Oh, I have to print. Oh, I know why. Because I have to actually. Yeah, there it is. Oh my gosh! Ooh. That's gorgeous. I love that. That's beautiful. I'm just starting with that, but I need uh, I gotta make it longer. Um, the problem is, is I've got to make. Oh, are you seeing it all? Is it showing up all of it? Or wait a second, maybe right I now to, it's just the very top part. Okay, here it is. Oh so, yeah! Oh look at that. So, what I want to do is, since it's gonna have to be going on a surfboard, I don't want to cut cut the sides so i'm gonna have to make this longer so you think if i put more sky in there would you have any problem with that no by a third i want to add a third and then i would think that like add a little bit more sky but right in the area between the last um the last wave thing ripple that goes across the bottom and 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 the coral at the bottom Mm -hmm. add, add more of that in there and elongate that area. Yeah, I was thinking about that. Yeah, the the actually the open ocean underneath. Yeah, okay. exactly, exactly. Yeah, that would give me a lot of. Yeah, you're right. Are so, you going to yeah. include the moon on the on the board? You have to do that. You can't leave the moon off the board. You have to position it so the moon's on the board. Well, yeah. Oh, totally. That's the yeah. reason why I would make it longer. Uh, it'll right. be on the left side. So I wanted to uh, I wanted to balance the the reflections off the water with the moon, and that light source with uh, the light source of the of the Milky Way, and right. and then um, as you notice on the side of the moon, the light source goes all the way underwater, so that's where you see like a light source, and I'm gonna have like a big grouper somewhere. Uh, when I was like 11, my dad took us down to Baja and we took the camper uh, all the way down on the uh, coast, coastal road down Baja. And we stayed, uh, we stayed at this place uh, called Bahia de la Concepcion, which was a yeah. big bay. 
And there was this squatter there that lived with his wife, and he had a little ponga, and we went out with him at night. And I right. swear, swear to God, I looked down the water, and it was like M.C. Escher-esque with all yeah. these fish glowing. And they were big fish. I mean, it looked like there was like – like, and so – I took that memory and I want to capture that whole thing. I haven't put any uh, fish. I'm just doing the corals. And I, I you know, um, I like, so, so you're saying you're not going to add the little fish in there. I am. I am. Oh, and, I was going to say, cause that little orange fish makes it. That, that That's just like, that's, this is all coral right now. Okay. I'm setting the, the tone. With oh, okay. The, and then the sandy bottom there. So like in the foreground is the edge of a coral reef. And I'm going to have like, uh, some big fish and maybe some uh, a shadowy fish mm -hmm. of, of bioluminescence. You see right. what my, my cursor is like there, you know. Yeah. But disappearing into the in the for, into the background. And I think I, that's awesome. Do you, do you like the vibe of it? I do. I do. I love it. I love it. Do you do you see where it goes underwater? The 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 this line here is that clear? Where it beco goes from above the water to underwater, the surface of the water. I think well, I'm gonna, I'm zooming in my screen here. Yeah, that. You see where my cursor is. Yeah, I see that that's the surface of the water. But what's the rest of it above? If that's where it's going. This is like this is like right before the next wave, right? So this is this open flat area of water. That's why you see the you hear the reflection of the moon. Right, right. I see water. that. And then then this is the curl of the wave, and it's and it's also like the spray and the foam right before. Okay. So, so that sure. whole that whole area from like the horizon line down to where the where it begins to go underwater, that's the entire surface. Yeah. You know what I might suggest is 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 doing a perspective adjustment, a, a perspective distortion, and 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 kind of on that on that on that center area compressing to make, it. to make it look like it's going like trailing off into the distance. Well, yeah. So you, so you want to compress the perspective more so that the foreground. Yeah. Just because I think here, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm, I'm stealing, I'm stealing this. I'm stealing it. And then, and then that would give me more of the underwater space. Yeah. So I'm thinking that if you. Yeah. I'm thinking about doing toying with that. Yeah. But if you, if you do, if you change the perspective on, on, on that, I'm, I'm okay. So I'm, is it okay if I share my screen for a second? Yeah. 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 Okay. So, so stop sharing. Or yeah. Stop sharing. And then I'm going to uh, share screen and okay. All right. It's so cool. You, you, got the, you got the concept right away. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to hit, I'm gonna click and then share and then okay. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Okay, so you see you see where I have here? Oh, you did a screenshot. Yeah, you did, you did a screenshot. So basically if you have this area and I'm gonna copy and paste it and, and then do a um a transform perspective. Uh and then I'm gonna bring this out yeah. and this in. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and then that can oh, I don't want to do that. Um but then you can do a, um, a distort uh, and yeah. bring this up a little. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, definitely. You know, if you bring it up and then bring this out. Yeah. Oh, come on. Cooperate with me. What is it doing? I do want, I do want some of that. Okay, yeah. I do want a little space, though, on the sides of that, that second wave. But if yeah. you do it like this, right, and then and then you can take you can take um, this area that's that's here, and then that and then it becomes more more uh, open water. Yeah, yeah, and then and then um, paste it up more. Yeah, move oh. up more. Oh, so okay. So let me paste. You do that, the, uh, You use the same tools I do. I do. I do that that stuff. Yeah, I mess with stuff like that. Yeah, and then and then. You can just bring that down. Oops. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And then you, you fill that with fish more. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I'm bringing it in so that you have the rays because the rays are important. The, the ray light. 
the, only, the, the, the thing that, yeah, the thing that I, I need to be to balance is uh, that, that uh, the closest moon reflection, I want that to show, because it gives that, that, that presence. This, like this that. reflection right here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, just that's, there. it'd be good if it were more pronounced and that, that light, that light hit that pinky more. color were actually reflected through farther. Well, yeah. So, so if, if, um, is it on this layer? Yeah, it's on this layer. So if, if we went in and did a, a stamp uh -huh. and, then, and then did a, we're going to here and then we're going to bring it over here and we're going to do, it would be more extensive. Yeah. Okay. I got an edge there, but you get what I'm saying. Yeah, totally. Because the perspective. Yeah, yeah. So if you just bring that, that pink across or, cause it's going to reflect the, the pink that's in the sky, you know, oh, like, not, so, but, the, but the thing is on that side, Kim, I yeah. wanted to like line up with the moon and, and, and to read as a reflection coming at bouncing off the, the water mm -hmm. there. Moon. And, and having the perspective as they get there. And then the other side is about- Then the honestly, you should have more of the white from the moon yeah. right here. Have this darker blue or reflect the pinks that are here and the purples that are here. And just like take the- Yeah. Okay, take um, copy paste and then we do a-, a transform flip vertical um mm -hmm. bring that here but on top and then yeah. do a multiply and yeah. then and then darker uh, or you could do like uh what I, what I use is either overlay or lighten or screen depending I mess with that yeah I don't like the I don't like the multiply here but multiply works when you want to make something darker Right. So if we take this and, and we run through. Another thing I've been doing is, is, is I, I run it through. Um, Ooh, I kind of like that. Yeah. I just got to make it more, a little bit more contrasting. I, I want to, yeah. I want to, I, I don't want to lose that rhythm between the, the lights and the darks coming no, in. Of course not. But I have to mess with that. I, what I've been using that's been successful for me is using the, um, the the lay, adjustment layers, you know, when you when you uh, when you selectively uh, you create a layer above that, and then you use uh, select col color range, right? Yeah. And then you select the color you want, mm -hmm. everything of that color, right? And then you hit it with an adjustment layer, and then you mess with the the slider, the hue, hue and uh. uh um, so Gretchen is saying that, that she she loves it and that it would be interesting if the horizon was either higher or lower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm thinking. Because you don't want it in the middle. That's like a big no-no. Yeah, because it's it's too static. Right. So then you have to, like, okay, which one is more dynamic, the ocean, ocean part or the sky part? Yeah. And I think at this point the sky is winning. Yeah. It, it But I think that, yeah. But – it could change when you add the fish. Exactly. That's why, I'm thinking, that's why I'm thinking it's the law of thirds. It's going to be a three thirds, one third thing. Yeah. So I got to, I got to mess with that now. I mean, I, I feel like I have the skeleton there, right? Oh, and you're doing great. I just have to mess with the proportions now and then I could start populating it with, with, with things. Yeah. This, this, is, this is how I get my ideas. This is how I work. I, then, I do like something similar, like right now for the Beverly Hills workshop, I want to do something that, oh, I'm stop sharing my screen. Okay. Um, I want to uh, do something that's at the mansion. And what she mentioned is that there's a little pond with, with, with turtles. So I want to, um, I want to, I want to do like little pond turtles with reeds and sitting on a rock kind of, kind of thing is going to be for the workshop. You know what you should do? If you have can you get a printer over there. I need to do something because it's a painting class. It's not a drawing class. I need to give them, here's the finished drawing. We're painting. Well, an, another thing that, for, that since you have all the Adobe skills and you have an iPad. Yeah. 
you could show how you could take that pond, take a photograph of that pond, uh, import it into Adobe uh, Photoshop on the iPad or something. Yeah. Mask colors, like, just like what we did. And then compo compose something that's painterly and then turn it out. And then that's what you paint from. Yeah, and that's that's honestly kind of what I'm doing with, with these yeah. guys. Is I'm just, I'm literally holding it upside down. But, you know, I literally, it's it's other assets. This thing is the classroom, the yeah. TV, the TV cart, yeah. the teacher, yeah. and one, two, three, four kids. And but so it's, it's literally all these different files. But what's amazing and it's exciting is you can do this at 3D, create a 2D image out of that and make a painting. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, it's like I want to do a graphic novel. I've ha had it in my mind for years. Right. To do that, that's why I picked up all the sculpting modeling. You know, I've created spaceships and stuff like that. You see it on my Sketchfab uh, page. But yeah. I want to do use those avatars and compose them and create, you know, um, sheets of drawings in, in, in Photoshop and themes. And then, like, you know, just. Yeah. But I, that's how I, I that, that's how I do things with, with, with um, my painting, you know, is, is come up with stuff and, and images and throw those to work together and collage. Um, yeah. A lot of painters used to do that. Um, um, right, Katie, in the old school? Oh, yeah. Uh, some of the painters would do a collage. Yeah, like, I had an instructor who was totally a traditionalist, and he always made us do a composition design. He made us do like five thumbnails first, uh -huh. you know, with a variety of possibilities for how to design everything. And then we had to do a shaded composition and like all the stuff I do in Photoshop now, he used, I used to have to do old school, you know, and oh, I yeah. love Photoshop. I think if the old masters had had access to Photoshop, they totally would have used it. Oh yeah. So it just frees you up, but you have, but if you have the foundational skills like you and Kim have, it's yeah. like, you're on steroids now. I mean, it's like, oh God, yeah, it's like crazy. You get a razor. I mean, you well, can it's like I was talking to Chad earlier about doing this dummy for the book because we want to have a dummy for the book so we can show what the story is going to look like, and then we're going to shoot the coloring book so we can show what the AR is has looked like in other projects. And um, but I was going to hand sketch all these things, and then I'm like. Um, that's going to take me forever and it's not going to look as, it's not going to impart the same feeling. So I love this idea. <laughs> now the paintings will not look like this, but you know, this is, this is the storyboard. At least we're going to show the storyboard and character pages. So we okay. have, um, let me show you, I want to show you, um, Kim, you know what you're on in the process, just from film production, uh, you do, the storyboards uh, are, are great, but, um, but also don't be afraid to thumbnail your composition together uh, to, to do a bunch of little thumbnails and they don't, they can be very cartoony because it, right. it, it gives you an idea of composition mm -hmm. and how, how it's going to lay on the page, lay out in the yeah. page so that it'll pay dividends when you, when you lay out, when you yeah. do layouts, you know, and make those decisions. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, um, yeah, you're, you're using the tools really effectively and it, it's like, you can come out with stuff really quickly that way. Yeah. Anything you can do in art to gain speed without losing quality is phenomenal. Yeah. Because it comes out of our brain. I mean, I, I mean, there's so many ideas you guys that I have in my oh, mind. Whatever, whatever tools you can impart to whatever tools you can utilize to impart your vision. Right. That's what you got to do. Okay, I got to show you guys something because that's why I keep a sketchbook too. Sometimes, right? I'll, I'll, I'll I'm gonna be right back. I want to. I want to get something. I'll make sure that doesn't fall. Okay. Like I have this idea. Sometimes it's architectural. I have this idea. I've been doing the virtual gallery thing, but we're gonna do this show that was surf art. So I had this idea of creating a linear gar gallery where the roof is a wave. Oh, cool! A quick thumbnail, and so it's. I don't know how it happens to you, but like during the day and sometimes my, my mind kind of like shifts to different projects 
and what yeah. yeah that's the yeah i saw you working on that yeah so four fifth, four fifth. Ooh, looks so good oh you wow have, you know kim yeah. you should at least that's at least worth 450 man well i i kind of told her different but it it it, it uh it, it enlarged on on me so i think for this one it's going to be a compromise because she's not prepared for a 450 figure but she so but I like this size. This is a real comfortable size for me to do. Um, I love it. I was going to trim these wings to be, you know, to have to come have arcs on the inside, but I like how they're just laying over the legs. You know, you would be, you would be, I know you're using blender. Yeah. But if you did, if, if you did with a, a, a Wacom tablet and you yeah. use a, a Z brush, Z yeah. brush, is like a traditional modeling. It's like modeling in clay. Right. You, I mean, talk about a kid with a razor, you would like be doing this all, and, and, and it does like, um, um, like you could do cloth and drape cloth and it'll do the, See, that's, that's freaking awesome. Um, um, go to the pixel logic site and they have yeah. demo. demo so chat is, chat is saying that, that I should go try unreal engine. And well, that's what Unreal Engine is what you load all the 3D stuff into. It's a game yeah. engine. Mm -hmm. So what you do is you build environments and you load them into Unreal Engine and then you So it's not going to replace um, Verge 3D. Yeah, it, it, okay. it's the interactive component, what you're doing yeah. for you. But Unreal, you're right. Unreal Engine is the one that's the Cadillac now. That's the one that's going to be the Adobe of 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 uh mm -hmm. and, and and doing anything interactive so mm -hmm. um i think mm -hmm. i don't know what a license uh costs but we have uh, shane lakita on uh, with us hi shane <laughs> hey how's it going how you shane, doing this is steven and then uh, up there working with the pat palette is katie neely hi Ooh, i see creativity happen i love it Yep, I'm preparing my paint for uh, tomorrow. We've already messed. We've already created something. Uh, I mean, we've we've talked about like my piece already, and she's already, you know. Yeah. Well, that out. Jane was was live streaming on TikTok until probably a couple minutes ago. Really? It was yeah, oh. it was yeah. We had a pretty good crowd tonight. It was crazy. I was trying to get some. I usually try to be able to incorporate some sort of artwork and some sort of uh, digital pieces that I, when I'm on the lives and I just couldn't tonight. It was so, it was like busy. It was really busy. Yeah. Lots of conversation. So hey, change, change the one that did my, my um, avatar. Ooh. Hey, my new avatar. I love that. Have you used, uh, uh, have you used ZBrush? No, I mo mostly for me, I, you know, what was funny was, is once quarantine went down, I, I got back into doing some of the creative stuff that I that I had done way back in the day, you know, on regular artwork. But uh, when I went out and got the new iPad and I got the Apple Pencil and I got Procreate, I started getting really creative with just the, that that overall program. Too. So, yeah, yeah, I got Procreate. It's really cool because um, it's a small little just on a pad. It's like a sketchbook, right? And and it's pretty pretty uh, amazing. Um, and so you could turn that up. Uh, the reason I say is because uh, Kim's like doing, um, uh, she's using Verge 3D and we we're talking about how Chad um, Winstreet talked about the real, and it's true, the, the real thing about- um, The Unreal Engine. Is, is the, um, yes, is the one that's uh, becoming the dominant uh, vehicle for interactive um, uh, digital art and, mm -hmm. Um, and, and this this all came up, Shane, because I, I launched a Kickstarter last night. Oh, yes. nice. I launched a Kickstarter for a book um, about endangered species for kids. I'm going to be right back, you guys. I'm just going to get okay. some power. All right. So, so I launched this Kickstarter last night, and the thing is it's it's an AR book. So you have a, the regular book, and then they have codes on the page. And when you look at it through your smart device, that through the app, the whole thing comes to life. Wow. You know, so like the whole story plays out on top of the book and, and there's, there's sound and there's motion and there's all kinds of really cool stuff. That's so, great. That sounds awesome. 
I've done a I've done a coloring book and, and with it and it's super popular. I love it. Um, but my video sucks <laughs> on my Kickstarter, <laughs> so I'm I'm having to um, I'm having to reshoot that. And one of um, one of the artists here um, from Art Storefronts is is saying, "Oh, just we'll, we'll do this," because he's in the visual effects in in the movie industry, and he's like, "Oh." I just have the lights and I have the this and I have the that. I just oh. do this. It's good to I have connections. Like, yeah. <laughs> so I was going to sketch out the whole book, but I decided that I was going to take the 3D components from the Turbo Squid, which is where I'm, I'm where I want to buy, and then I created this scene, and then I um, ran a Photoshop filter, uh, an action. Yeah. A Photoshop sketch action. So. That's awesome. That's exciting, though. Kickstarter. I mean, that's uh, nerve wracking and exciting at the same time. You know. Yeah, you know, I'm I'm like, okay, a bunch of people have seen it, but I don't like the video, so I don't want to continue sharing it until I get the new video. Mm -hmm. Chad says, "Can we pause your 30 day campaign?" And I'm like, "No." So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Once it's a so, go, it's a go. <laughs> I know. Have you done a Kickstarter before? I, I've I've partaken in them before, uh, not none of my own, but through friends and things like that that we've done. So yeah, right. I had a a friend of mine who um, I did jujitsu back in the day for a few years, and nice. it turns out that one of the guys I was rolling with, I didn't find this out until like we'd been rolling for six months. He's a fine artist, and I'm like, what? And he worked for Disney. Wow. And hmm. now he's moved to Florida and and he did a Kickstarter for his own book and he does life drawing and his stuff is amazing. Wow, but, that's awesome. But yeah, he did a Kickstarter. So I'm like, okay, maybe we can get this. Maybe we can do this. I'm mm. full of confidence, but then I'm nervous as heck. Oh yeah. That's the way it always is. I think artists are that way in general, aren't they? Like they're they're really confident in the things that they do. But then they're also, when they're challenging their thought process or they're trying to step outside of their comfort zones and stuff like that, we become kind of our own worst critic. And we're always like, you know, we start nitpicking stuff or picking things apart and those kind mm -hmm. of things. And then the mental side kicks over and we're just like, we sell ourselves short sometimes of the real true value of what we bring to the table sometimes. And I, and I oh, feel yeah. that artists do mm -hmm. that all the time, you know? Totally. Gretchen is saying that Kickstarter is how the oatmeal started. His mom yeah. is a very close friend. What's the oatmeal, Gretchen? It's an awesome comic. Mm. Okay. Um, the one thing that we have in common is that we use art storefronts as our web platform. So we have these marketing meetings twice a week that we go to that are like an hour and a half, two hours. Mm. So we have these hour and a half to two hour Zooms twice a week. I missed today. But... Um, are they like brainstorming sessions? Well, they're marketing advice. So gotcha. like they have a marketing calendar and they tell you, okay, this is what we're doing. This is the plan. This is the overall, um, you know, what are you struggling with? What are you struggling with? How can I help you solve that problem, et cetera, et cetera. So it's pretty cool. Mm. You know, it's awesome. Um, did, you, did you do the, um, uh, the, the, the thing you were going to do with Dave makes things with Dave Connery? That's Saturday. Saturday. That's, nice. that's Saturday. I'm really stoked about that. Um, I I have the website set up, the products put in, the links put in, everything's there. Just waiting for Saturday. I'm I'm you know, I think I, I'm trying not to make you know, we're we're being advised by the company that the, the marketing company that runs our sites that hey the more you're out there, video is king. The more you're out there, the more you're in front of people, the, the more people are going to come to your lives. So you got to do a billion of them. Do a right. thousand of them, you know? Yeah. Um, so I'm not trying to get all excited about one show and put all my eggs in that basket. This is another show, and I, I just want to keep doing shows with different artists. Right. You know? Yeah, the consistency is key. It really is with any kind of social media, any kind of uh, artwork, any kind of, uh, I mean, in general. And I know that, you know, 
uh, one of the things, and I know I, I, I kind of strategize around where, I don't know if you've listened to a lot of Gary V. Gary V does a lot of stuff where he talks about your consistency of your content. No matter what your content is or what you're trying to bring to the table, your consistency gets in front of more eyes. And if more eyes can see what you're doing, the more viral and an attraction can feel of what they, whatever they connect with. And they kind of sift through the whole landscape and the noise to figure it out. It's so crucial to stay consistent with it. It's the only advice because I do podcasts as well. Right, right, right. And, you do the cop And my podcast, literally, the only reason that it stays where it's at is because I'm consistent every single week with right. the show to put content out and people that have now become followers or subscribers to the content now are like they're they're advocates right and they're like okay now they and and they start to share it with their friends and everybody else so it's really good yet yeah, love gary v <laughs> yeah yeah so, yeah I mean, so you know my problem is that i'll try something and then if it's not working i get impatient and yeah. i'll move on to something else yeah. but um this is some. This show is something that I started uh, maybe three weeks ago, mm. but before that, it was called Four at Forty. No, it wasn't Four. It was just paint. Excuse me. I was just painting. I would go live and I would just paint. And it's like, okay, you know what? The concept of that show was that I'm going to start from scratch from a drawing, and you can get that drawing, whatever it's going to turn into, for this price. But the longer I paint, the more expensive it becomes. The more finished. So. It's like you could get in early, but you wouldn't know what you're getting into. And it never, I love the idea. I just don't think my audience is ready for that. Yeah. Is that kind of what Dave's doing on his, right? With his, uh, his a piece of, you mean like as you add on to it, you're saying like a, whatever art that you're doing? Is that well, what you're I would saying? Like start with a, I would start with a blank canvas and I'm like, okay, I'm going to draw an ostrich today and I'm just going to, I'm going to work on this ostrich. Right. And, you know, every, Every hour it would go up 50 bucks or something, you know? Mm -hmm. So, but you would see how it's progressing. Right. You know? So you either, you either trust that it's going to come out like the rest of my stuff. You That's know, a lot of know. faith. That's a lot of faith in what happened. I know. I was, I was throwing a lot of, a lot of, a lot at that, but, um, you know, I, I would have these guys come on with me and some would, paint and we we I go on with another artist and we'd do split screen so like I would be up here and then my 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 painting would be there and then like Steven would be over here and his painting would be down there mm -hmm. and we would just like be creating together simultaneously. Oh sorry my phone rang. I'll have to call him back. Um but um yeah so you know but it, it was more fun when we were on as a group and then we were just talking about hey did you try this hey did you try that and you know this marketing that sale uh this advice this social media whatever and that's the format that i think we were getting more traction with than anything so that's this format yeah it's collaborative i like that i like that mm -hmm. I, I watched one that um there's another artist on tiktok named madeline janelle that does a oh lot i of love moves. her yeah she so and I, I are watched, buddies. I watched her live um, when she did it with another artist, Scott. I think um, I can't remember his last name, but they did. So he stepped out of his comfort zone and she stepped out of hers. But they came together with a concept of a girl and a boy uh, back drawing back. a back-to-back -back painting. Yeah. yeah. It and they're was, like, do I put it like this or do I put it like that? Yeah, it was incredible. It's it, just looking at the, and it was about a seven hour session that they went through overall of where they were at with painting. And, and they brought it on the live through Instagram and some of the other feeds. And so I was popping in, uh, you know, left and right to be able to just see, when I mean, you could see collaborative artists getting together to kind of come together with ideas and just, mm -hmm. you see that creativity, it's inspiring to me. Every single time that I see that, I'm like, wow, you know, it just drives me to be more creative in the things that I do. And and whether it's with art or, you know, anything that I'm doing, it just, it really does inspire me. So. But that's why I like TikTok so much is because there's so many artists on there. I mean, I don't know what, whether it's just, you know, that's, that's, that's the road I took. So like I have so many artists right. in my feed because that's what I like. And so they're feeding me more of what I like, but the inspiration, you know, around everything is just, it's just awesome. Yeah. Um, it's really cool. Gretchen was talking about earlier, uh, uh, where is that comment? Um, she's going to come on next week, but uh, 
you know, she was saying that, you know, uh, talking about collaboration and she has a friend who's a painter and d does a lot of oil pastel and like, she'll give a half finished piece to him to finish. And, and mm -hmm. in the end they come up with something really, really cool. Um, I think that's something like a duet, right? right? But like a real life duet, like a real life duet. <laughs> I love that idea. I love yeah. that idea. Well, we should I, try that. I will tell you one of the things that my friend did. He he's a comic book guy, right? So he's big into comic books, big into artwork for comics. And what he did was, he has a, he had about thirty different blank c covers to comics, right? So Batman, some other ones, or whatever. And right. so what he said was, he reached out to all his artist friends on TikTok, and he asked them, "If I send you a blank canvas to a comic book, will you draw what your idea is for that cover?" And so he has seven of them going post. out right now and we're all doing it. I'm one of them. Madeline Janelle was another one. And we're, Oh yeah. That's totally her jam though. Yeah. 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 So I'm doing Batman and she did like uh she did like this, um, uh, like demon looking coming out of the darkness kind of stuff or whatever. And then, um, he's got about five or six other ones that he just sent all around the country. And so it's like mm -hmm. a collaborative, like a, almost like a duet. And he's going to, he's going to post about them all. And then he's, you know, going to promote that to be in the fact that mm -hmm. I have artists from all over the country through TikTok that have done their work for me to be able to put onto comic books that can, you know, kind of yeah. bring people together and stuff. It's pretty cool. Comic mm -hmm. books uh, art is a collaborative art in, to begin with. Right. You have people that are just pencilers. They're known for it. And then all they do is the pencils. They've got people that are inkers that are, are and then they've got pe people that do color. They've got people that just do the, the, um, the cover art too right mm -hmm. so this is just a natural and it's on steroids because now we have the digital connection mm -hmm. to an unlimited source of art and creativity it's, it's pretty exciting it is it is i think we should like send a piece around you know um katie was saying she had like a, a get together where where they they all had canvases and would start a piece and then like there would be a 30 minute whistle or something and they'd all rotate down one and they you know <laughs> yeah. and, and, and you know continue in the path that, that you know and and she said that was a lot of fun i can how would that work like on TikTok? that would be fun yeah, you know, you know who you should collaborate with that or really kind of talk to that about a lot with that would be Dave makes things. He he's yeah. into things like that because they do already stuff like remember the whole thing where he asked people to send a small oh, yeah. piece of paper that he could do artwork on and send back out just to like to mm -hmm. actually the concept was to support the post office to be able to put stamps on it. But on the same token, he did all this art and it got like, so overwhelming that he did it. He did the one piece that he kind of like put together to be able to send, but he loves collaborative stuff. Like so he gets Tell me what to I feel, need to put here, you know. To feel Katie and Steven and Dave makes things on TikTok is the guy that I'm having the show show with on Saturday. Oh. And and he did this project for the post office where he says, Look, you know, you know, we need to support the post office. So what he's doing is he's asking people to send him a blank piece of paper and return postage, and he was gonna draw something original, sign it, send it back. Oh, cool. Okay, but it got out of hand it was real, way real quick. <laughs> so then he had to order prints that he would then sign and send to most everybody. And the people that like sent him extra postage and mm -hmm. 20 bucks here and there or whatever books, you know, then he would do something a little bit more for, for those people. So he uh -huh. had to scale it because the response was just out of yeah. hand. That's the, a great problem to have. That's awesome. <laughs> well, I'm something there now. Now it's a vehicle. You have. You just have to know how to wield it now. You, you know, know another thing we could try if you <laughs> wanted to. We could all start with like one of your coloring book pages and all do our own thing with it. Oh, that would be cool. Yeah, mm -hmm. like we all start with the same skeleton and then we all at the same time go live at the same time everybody work on their own at the same time and you know look and see the the four different evolving pieces from the same original piece that would be cool i sent i sent a coloring book to greg greg runge oh, so yeah. and um, he's, he won't even he won't even open it and look he won't even color it because he, he wants to save it it's like you know a collector's item yeah he doesn't want to ruin it or whatever i'm like Dude, 
Now that's a character. Greg Rund is a character. He's he yeah he's he's fantastic. I, I've become uh, pretty good friends with him too. It's uh he's from like right outside of my hometown. He's actually looking to move back up to Portland, Maine, which is okay. where I'm from where I live. He wants to move back up and stuff. But you know he he. He became, uh, you know, very much where he went out there and did a lot of dancing, did a lot of fun stuff, and just was a good, good energy source or whatever. I did his avatar. If you look at his newest avatar, yeah, with the hat, I love yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, it came out really good. <laughs> my my brother li lived in Yarmouth. You know where oh, Yarmouth is? That's awesome. I would yeah. love this, Gretchen. Gretchen says that she could send us all a black and white abstract photo of hers, and that we would each do something different with it. That would be cool. Oh, that's cool. Gretchen's gonna come on next week, so let's 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 uh, let's let's plan that. That would be fun. Um, no, Greg did a thing dance hashtag dance for Tristan, right? Yep. And that was my proof of concept for my coloring book. So what I did is I, okay, I was gonna do this book that I just did the Kickstarter for, and my sister was gonna write the story, and my sister was like, oh, we can do these kids and do this and I'm like people I don't you know I don't do a lot of people so I decided I needed to practice people so I started mm -hmm. grabbing tiktokers down and just painting them and throwing it out there for for comments and critiques and Greg was one of the ones I picked because he had done dance for Tristan and it's da hashtag dance for Tristan for, for for Katie and Steven is 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 the story about this boy who's autistic and decides to go to the school dance and he oh takes off the, the comfort of his sweatshirt that he never goes without and gets all dressed up to go to this dance. Now he's got social anxiety and other things that go along with autism because there's usually comorbidities with that. And so he gets to the school and they turn him away. They say his grades aren't good enough for him to be there at that dance. Wow. So he, he was like, you know, standing up for, for Tristan, you know, bringing awareness to the situation by doing the hashtag dance for Tristan and with both my boys and my daughter being autistic, you know, it kind of hit home for me. Yeah. Um, so I did, um, you know, that painting of like the snail he had in the back in the background for a lot of his dance videos. Yep. So I have a painting of the painting and then he's coming in at an angle. And then I, I created a video that kind of was a jib jab with his jaw moving. And I overlaid the video and did a big AR thing with this little guy crawling out of the painting, coming around and just dancing as the the big head of Greg is telling the story. Mm. And um, I freaking loved loved the, the idea. So you, you, you use that to, um, app uh, that uh, Adobe has, uh, the Miyako or whatever. Mixamo. Mixamo, Mixamo yeah. Mixamo is good because it has characters and it yeah. has movements, and, and you can. Pick a character, pick a movement, download it, use it in your project. So, like mm. a lot of what I'm doing is not reinventing the wheel. Yeah, it's 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 finding artworks that other people have put up on sites where you can purchase them and bring them down and, and license them. Mm -hmm. Because I'm, you know, I'm I'm good 2D, but I'm not a good 3D artist. I can make stuff work. I've taught myself mm -hmm. to do mm -hmm. some really cool things, but. Uh, hey, uh, somewhere down the line, are we going to revisit like the uh, push for the virtual galleries? Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna revisit that. Let, keep me in the loop on that. So absolutely. Uh, yeah. Steven's a three D artist, so so we're gonna we're trying to do virtual galleries so that you can like show up at the gallery, walk through the gallery, go mm -hmm. look at different pieces through a virtual gallery. Mm -hmm. You know. That's I just awesome. do the modeling. She does the hard work, making it interactive. That's awesome. Well, it could, you know, we got some, look, look at a, four of us. I mean, between the four of us, how many ideas do we have? I mean, oh God, I started a program that tells your future. It's it's called fortune teller Java. <laughs> she, she 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 is is taking classes on top of being an artist and 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 just yeah killing it. She, you, what classes are you taking right now? Um. I'm taking um, four chemistry classes, technically, two, two labs and two chemistry classes. One is chemistry and art and the chemistry and art lab, which is totally mm -hmm. awesome. Totally awesome. I'm Ooh. so happy they're offering this class. That would be great for, like, preservation, like, you know, 
preservation. We haven't covered um, we haven't covered that yet. Where it's just what it's doing is it's it's associating art with chemistry. So we talk right. about chemicals that are in art supplies and how you make paint, you know, and and how the solutes work and what are the different pigments and where do they come from and how are they sourced and how does that work as far as you know finding the solubility of something and how things combine and all this stuff and the okay. catalyst and the drying time. Right. Yeah, yeah but what those factors are affected by and the oxidation process and all this stuff like is in there, you know, but it's it's not a very hard class. It's sort of like the chemistry class for the non math people right now. <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah. But it's cool. I love it. It's really exciting. I spent like I binge watched all these YouTube videos on chemistry and art. Just go on YouTube and Google chemistry and art and you will find conservation videos where conservationists have put up you know, they've recorded the whole process of repairing a painting because they have to document the condition of a painting so well before they touch yeah. it. And they analyze every little part of it before, you know, they do anything and they mix the original pigments to put back in there. And they, it's just crazy all the stuff they do. It's just you crazy. Guys, uh, up to like not too long ago, uh, artists had to mix their own paints. I mean, they had to start yeah. from scratch and, and take. Yeah used to be chemists and we used to have a really tight relationship with our chemist because yeah. our chemist would be the one who would source and, and make the paint and, and, and refine the lens needle and do all that stuff. So Gretchen is piping in and says that she's got this really cool show going on in Seattle and that we should go by and check it out. Okay. So I will definitely do that, Gretchen. Definitely. Will. Yeah. God, um, this, this is amazing, you guys. I mean, just just hearing all these ideas and the creativity and I mean, it really inspires me and, and um, it's very, don't you find it very like, um, it's stimulating, fortifying, yeah. stimulating. And it's just like, well, we're all isolated right now because of what's going on. So, you know, we're turning to, right. we're turning to computer and I'm, I'm finding that I'm actually finding people that I wouldn't have otherwise run into and they've become, um, a really cool part of my life. So, I mean, know. like you and Katie and um, Tatiana, and who was the other one? Uh, Lamore and Beth. I mean, you guys are like like this. I mean, oh, yeah. you guys. But what's really great is how that dovetailed into you guys forming. Like you, you got like this little cabal, this little thing where you you reinforce each other. Yeah, and that's a really we great. Um, I mean, even now, now it's even more important is it's kind of like a, a, a system of a support system, you know, you know, well, I, I, I think that that we we all got together, Shane, when we did a women in art show. And the reason we called it women in art was because that was the only thing we had in common. We were <laughs> spread across four yeah. time zones in five different states. And yeah. Three different you know, yeah. Never Everything. met. Painted everything. You know, Katie. Katie brought martial art, art work, awesome. and paintings. It was awesome. And then um, uh, Tatiana does abstract word art, and 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 just you know everybody was all over the place. So we called it Women in Art. And then it wasn't until like I had to defend our title to some dude. Dude, what are you doing? What are you calling it that? <laughs> Nobody's gonna come see your show in because all they're gonna want to do is come see the pretty girls. They're not gonna want to come see your art. What are you doing? <laughs> What's he talking about? Come on. Yeah. Man. So, um, so, so yeah, you know. But I started researching it. It's like I, 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 I found out so many things that I didn't know about how un, how, you know, on average. There, we're underrepresented as women. We're underrepresented as women. We're not paid for art as much as men are paid for their art on average. Um, and then the attention is is given mainly to men. You know, you look at at, at um, uh, there was an event at um, oh, what, one of the big auction houses, and Banksy. You know, that particular one a woman had like commanded the highest price that a woman had ever commanded for, for an auction item. And rather than making the news, the fact that bank, one of Banksy's pieces self-destructed over there in the corner made just huge news. He had designed it to self-destruct, but it like diverted attention away from something important that had happened. Typical. To, 
yeah, but but you know that's that's just the way it is. Right. So I don't I don't feel bad about having a women's show. But you know, it's like also like this whole thing that's happening though. The gallery structure is is changing the whole thing. I mean, there's more opportunities for women, and the more you guys take the bull by the horns and just say we don't need anybody telling us what to do and 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 organize your shows and do yeah. that i think it's good for art and it's good for women in art and it, it it's gonna be you guys got a, a great opportunity i you guys should do another art show women in art you know i think i think we will i think i wanted to kind of do another big virtual show and yeah and just tag like Madeline. I would love to have Madeline. I'm trying to wrangle Madeline, but Madeline is just so busy. She I'll, is. Design, I'll design a gallery for you. Okay, that would be awesome. That would be awesome. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I would love to have Madeline in there. And then um, uh, some there's of the- a couple other, There's a couple other really, really talented female artists, especially the uh, in, within Madeline's uh, group as well. Like there was uh, one Dead, I saw Deadpool that... Life, I think is another one and some Sit. other ones. Yeah. I, I follow a couple of them. I would I would yep. love that. You know, then, you know, like get uh, integrate music into that. You know. Well, the only problem with music is that uh, the minute you incorporate music is the minute you get your entire show muted because you pick something that you don't yeah. have access to. Yeah, that's true. Right. Yeah. Well, you I mean, the integrate, you know, I'm glad that the artists are finally for years the producers just totally screwed recording artists and they like i guess they won a big case about four or five years ago right and they're they're finally getting paid what they deserve to get paid you know mm -hmm. so i mean there's a certain justice about that but i'm sure there's ways of getting i mean if you involve the the the, the uh, musical artists in the future you can well there are stations or places where you can go to get Free music. It's just you have to be careful. Um, that AI I showed you evoke mm -hmm. it's an artificial intelligence program, mm -hmm. and you and and it's it's uh, um, you know you buy the license monthly. It's fourteen mm -hmm. bucks, and you can use that. And it. And well, but here's here's the thing. I use Adobe Spark. Do you use Adobe Spark? Chain? Yeah, but yeah, but I don't. I've used their, mm -hmm. I've used their, have you used their their uh, soundtracks? I've used their soundtracks. I have to. Every time YouTube complains, says that there's a conflict or whatever, they may, they notify me. They don't do anything with the video, and then it comes back okay, but they don't like it every blast of time. Mm -hmm. well, but but Adobe puts it out like it's it's you can use it. I mean, it's if you look at it. There's licenses that you can download and then upload to YouTube to show that you have license for this. So there's like this extra process you have to go to when you're producing videos. I've never had a problem with that. I've used Adobe Spark. I started out using Adobe Spark's uh, mm -hmm. music and, and I, I never had a problem. But the thing is, it's limited and 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 that's the thing. So that's why I went to this evoke. And Shane, literally, I want you to meet my boy. Get in here. Get in here. Superman. Look at this. <laughs> this hey, is buddy. my Ian. Super. How you doing? Look at that. Look at this. Super uh, dude. Oh, yeah. I like it. I'm digging it. I'm digging it. I'm digging it. He's 18. <laughs> <laughs> right? That's the difference oh, in you, between yours and mine. Mine's all silver and gray. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but I have no hair. My, my face is like a baby's behind. No hair on it. <laughs> oh, let's not talk about behinds. <laughs> He's got a hairy behind. <laughs> Funny. No, it's just you know he's the one I have to. He has seizures, and when he has seizures, he has them in the shower, which is never a good place. Mm. Um. So, um, I've got one of those pool noodles split in half, wrapped around the faucet, so he doesn't split his head open on those anymore. Um. And actually, and in, in, he's using shower claws for the time being until we can get his seizures under control. We just started a ketogenic diet because he's been on every medication. He has a VNS implant, and um, he's tried. He's been on Epidiolex, which is a CBD-based, federally approved medication. Yeah. So, 
so far so good. We've been three weeks on the diet and no seizures. So there's hope. Good. That's awesome. No. Yeah. It's a good start. Shane, check it out. What is that? I got to take off my glasses here to see that. Is that a rhino? Like, what yeah. is that? It's oh, a nice. charging rhino. I love it. it. Save the chubby unicorn. <laughs> I love it. That's fantastic. <laughs> That's great. Are they, um, they're not really aggressive creatures by nature, are they? If they will charge you. Mm -hmm. If you, there's a story, one of the pieces that was donated for bowling for rhinos, which is mm -hmm. a, um, I'm, I'm doing a, for the Kansas City Zoo, I'm heading up their silent auction for, um, for this event. And one of the pieces that I got donated, um, the artist said, okay, this guy was okay until we got just a little too close. Then he's kicking up dust and, you know, warning us that he's going to charge because we're closer than he wants. So um, I think, I think, you know, they're, they're, they're defensive, uh, you know? Right. But do, territorial. Do they, do they uh, associate in herds or small, smaller groups? Um, from what I know, they, they do, they're in groups. Um, I know more about elephants than I do rhinos, believe it yeah. or not. So. Yeah. I think a lot of, uh, I think that there's uh, a lot more known about elephants than rhinos. Well, see, and that's the thing. And that's like the concept of the book is that when the kids, when the kids start to meet the animals, they talk to the lion and the elephant. The lion and the elephant are actually on the IUCN red list as vulnerable, which is towards the lower end. And it's because they're high visible animals and attention has been paid to them. But in the story, they're like, you know, we're doing better because people have attended to us, but we're not as, we're luckier than these others. Let me introduce them. And then introduce <laughs> the rhino, which, you know, the black rhino, there's maybe, uh, between a thousand and two thousand individuals, mm. you know, and there's there used to be hundreds of species of rhinos, and, and you know we're down to five, and all but one are at some level of of not good endangered, you know. The, so, hey, uh, I I gotta run. I really appreciate uh, you in, uh, inviting me to this uh, little collaboration. Little, uh, yeah. I love this. This is really cool uh, to be able. We're to gonna do this every week. Yeah, I'll shoot you a link. Join when you can. I appreciate that. That's really awesome. Nice meeting all you nice guys. I appreciate you. it. Nice to well, meet you. Great. Show off your um. Come next week and show off your your um your project, um with the avatars. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'll bring uh, I'll I'll be able to show off some of the actual avatars that I've done and then and kind of uh and the concept behind it the painted exactly. forward uh, concept please, so please yeah okay all right okay I'll send you a link next week I'll see you next week all, all right. right thanks guys right. bye 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 so there we are yeah this is great man this was a really good show I am gonna have to wind it down because I have like a ton of stuff to do yeah. and normally this show runs for an hour and we've been on for two hours and 15 minutes so yeah this <laughs> Fantastic Thursday nights, man. Thursday nights at six o'clock, and you know, I just I just throw the link out there. You know, I was getting ready to start. I had five minutes to go, and I had nobody in my backstage, so I went to Small Winds and I threw the link in the middle of Small Winds, and I said, "Come out." Yeah. So I'm gonna do that, and like, just let people join, and we'll. I think it's gaining more of a structure as we go yeah. along. Yeah, but I, I I look forward to doing this Thursday nights. Yeah. Are you starting a painting, Katie? Um, I'm working on a commission. I oh, have, yeah. uh, I'm getting a videotaped painting tomorrow. So I've, I got my paints ready to go. Uh, they're coming over at like nine in the morning. I have to clean my house actually is what I have to go do. The <laughs> uh, not, not fun <laughs> stuff. Oh, yeah. it is, uh, actually, I enjoy it because um, the other thing I do is bust my you know, it's a break. When I when I stop to clean the house, I'm taking a break. That's my break. Yeah. Just, really music. Just clean. I, um, exactly. I can put music on and do it. I, you know, I was trying to jam. I can I can code and listen to music, but I can't like do chemistry problems like math while I'm listening to music. I don't know why. 
you know, but even if there's no lyrics, I'm just like, I need silence to, you know, do stoichiometry or whatever it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I remember that. Yeah. So next Thursday. All right. Six o'clock. We're going to go. We're, I want the structure I want to have for this is, excuse me, show off what you're working on. Mm -hmm. Bring any any questions or problems or hurdles. Okay. And just camaraderie. Okay. That's awesome. All right. Uh, Love we'll, it. We'll enjoy okay. it. We did this week. Okay. So next week's palette check. Join All us. Right. Palette check. All right. All right. See you guys. All right. All right. Talk to you later. <laughs>